Welcome to Dr. D. Y. Patil Institute of Hotel Management Pune. This presentation is prepared by Professor Azim Sheikh for the second year, BSc Hospitality Studies. Thank you. Today we are going to learn about the concept of quantity food production. Quantity food production is difficult to define. Also it can not be restricted to some number. However, quantity food production can be defined as cooking food for 25 or more peoples. The requirement of quantity food production is seen where there are a large number of peoples to be fed. For example banquets, industrial canteens, religious places like Linga in Imritsa and so on. There are few requirements for the successful operation of quantity food operation. 1. Special attention must be given while cooking a large quantity of food. Otherwise, low quality food may be produced, or sometimes food wastage may happen in some cases. Like the burning of dal, overcooking of rice. The next requirement for successful quantity food production operation is a professional approach. With the professional approach, and skill, one can solve any difficulty while bulk cooking. Also, workflow planning plays key role in bulk cooking. Proper workflow sequence, starting from receiving of material, till cooking and serving food, is one of the secret of the successful quantity kitchen operation. Process following, is also parallelly important, because in bulk cooking maintaining hygiene is very critical, therefore all processes of the following hygiene must be followed strictly. And principles of HACCP that is, hazard analysis and critical control point must be implemented. In this table, we can see, the classification of sectors of quantity food production. Quantity food production sectors are classified, in two major sectors, one, is commercial and the other, is welfare. The commercial sector, as a name suggests, operates for commercial purpose. So, the commercial sector is the one, which operates for profit. While the welfare sector, operates on no profit, no loss basis, or, on break-even point, for example, catering in orphanages, prisons, and so on. As, we can see in the table, the commercial sector, is further classified as, the general commercial sector, and the restricted commercial sectors, of quantity food production. General commercial sector is the one, which is open for general public. There are no restrictions for general public, to avail service in general commercial sector. For example, hotels, restaurants, takeaways etc. But, in case of restricted commercial sector, only bona fide or authorized guests, can avail the services. For example railway catering, where, only bona fide travelers, can avail food facility in the train. Similarly, in clubs, only bona fide members are allowed to avail the service. Let's understand, the concept of industrial catering. The industrial catering is defined as, catering, done for the employees of an organization, by the organization itself, or by a managing body, on behalf of said organization. Here, managing body, is referred as, the third party service provider company, which provides food service. There are few key points of the industrial catering. Those are as follows. First, it may be done as a service, or, with commercial motivations. Generally, it is done as a service, to the employees of the company. But, if food service is done by the outsourced service provider, then, it is for commercial purpose. However, the organization, which provides service to employees, does not consider it as a profit-earning source. Second is, the number of meals served, may range anywhere from 30 to 2000 packs or, more. This depends, on the size of the organization, that is, the number of employees working in that organization. The third one is, industrial catering is a crucial, and a sensitive, because, it caters to a large group of people, within limited time span. One small complaint, is equal, to the number of people complaining. In this slide, we shall understand, the characteristics of industrial catering. First, is to serve, hygienically prepared wholesome food. 
it is not only the characteristic but also the requirement of industrial catering. Since workers perform heavy work, their diet should also match the type of task they perform. Next, the food is primarily served as a service to complement with their other activities and contribute to the fulfillment of the objectives of the organization. The third one is the cyclic menus. We shall understand the concept of the cyclic menu in the next slide. The fourth characteristic is that the industrial catering is not profit oriented. It is also mentioned earlier that it is nothing but the basic food service facility for the industrial employees, and there is no motive of earning profit. The last characteristic is the educational experience for those who are involved in the catering as they happen to experience different regional cuisine through the cyclic menus. As a result, food habits become more flexible. This is a good thing about industrial catering, that workers from different regions are introduced to the food which they never had before. Let us see what is the cyclic menu and its use in the quantity cooking. Cyclic menu is defined as a menu that offers different meals, breakfast, lunch, evening snacks, dinner, etc., every day, and repeats itself after multiple days, that is weekly, 15 days, and a month. The cyclic menu is useful in the bulk cooking, because, it gives track of operation, indenting and workflow, for the period, it is to be prepared. It reduces daily stress of thinking, and planning, what is to be prepared for each meal, each day. The cyclic menu is used in institutes, hospitals, industrial canteens, and many other institutions, where there are large number of peoples to be fed daily. Here, we will go through the menu considerations of industrial catering. First one is, the cyclic menu for regular meals and limited choice in canteens. There is limited choice in canteen because food is served as basic requirement for employees, also on non-profit basis. Second is, nutritional requirements. The nutritional requirements are kept in mind, while planning menu. This is because, diet should match with the type of heavy manual work done, by the employees or workers. Third one is, the reasonable prices, consistent with service offered. The reasonable price term meaning here is, the minimum price charged monthly just to cover the basic cost of meal, without any profit consideration. Fourth consideration is, that, the menus are relatively simple, which can be prepared, by limited kitchen staff, in limited time. As there is requirement of basic meal, everyday meals are designed, in such a way that, it would be easy to prepare, within limited time with limited manpower. Also methods of cooking are simple, and not time consuming. Last consideration states that, special menus are prepared, for special occasions. Like on festivals, functions, and parties. This gives different feel than the daily boring routine meals. During festivals, monthly gatherings, anniversaries, special menus offers enjoyment to workers. Have a look at this industrial menu. This is the actual menu being served in the month of April 2020 at the industrial site. Here, it is clear that food service is done by the outsourced service provider, named as AIPL. In this case, the industrial firm provides food service, to its employees on a welfare basis, at a very low cost, without earning any profit. And AIPL does the food service on behalf of the industrial firm. This is the simple menu, which includes, three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If observed, we can see that it is simple, budget-friendly, and easy to prepare. At the same time, it has wholesome food, in every meal. At the bottom, we can see, that there are some notes mentioned. The note about sweet is very important to notice, that it would be served only two times in a month. Let us discuss about, the challenges of industrial catering. First one is, the menu fatigue. It is nothing but the tiredness while preparing menu, especially cyclic menu. Because, it is critical task, to prepare good menu, with the considerations of different varieties, cost friendly, 
easy to prepare and non-time consuming, and so on. Next is, blending nutritional aspect with taste, is little difficult. It is simple that, the food which is nutritious, cannot always be tasty. Third challenge is, the portion control. It is difficult to control the individual's portion. As food is served in bain maries, people may take more quantity of food, and later it may be wasted, if not consumed. Fourth one is, staff serving food finds it difficult, to meet the expectations of consumers. For example, everyone cannot be given a leg piece of chicken, if chicken curry is served. Fifth challenge is the most applicable, and that is, a large number of people to be fed, in a limited time. It is very important, to serve food on time, because, there are fixed meal timings allotted, in each shift. Sixth challenge is, to maintain high standards of cleanliness, and sanitation. With limited staff, it becomes difficult to maintain cleaning as well as hygiene during busy schedule. Last challenge is, arranging adequate facilities, and managing them, is a challenge, like space of dining hall, seating arrangements, food, and water service, etc. Because, with these facilities, cost and burden of maintaining them, also increases.